Hello, everyone. Welcome to the RCMP course. And this part, we're going to introduce the port mirroring basins. About the port mirroring basins, firstly, let's see the preface. Port mirroring sends a copy of network packets on the specified ports or packets that meet certain criteria to destination ports. It can be used for network monitoring and troubleshooting. After knowing the function of it, next let's see the local port mirroring principles and configurations. About the port mirroring, here is a very typical application scenario. The traffic matters a lot to OM and the security of a network. Port mirroring can copy traffic to the network monitoring system for analyze. Switch port mirroring, also known as port listening or switch port analyzer, which is called SPAN, copies traffic of the listened ports to the mirroring ports. So in the network on the devices, there could be listened ports or mirroring ports, right? And about the SPAN or the port mirroring, there is a port, which is called south port. A south port is also called a listened port. In a span session, data flows on the south port are listened for network analyze or troubleshooting. In a single span session, you can monitor the ingress, egress, or bidirectional data flows. There is no limit on the number of south ports which however is limited by device performance and the destination port bandwidth. And about the salt port, it can be a layer two, layer three, or even an aggregate interface. A salt port cannot be a destination port. Salt and destination ports can be on the same VLAN or different VLANs. And about the destination port, it receives the exact copies of data packets from the south port. And about the destination port, it could be a layer two, layer three, or aggregate interface. There can be only one destination port in a span session. By default, a destination port cannot be a service port unless it has the switch parameter set. Means during the configuration, there is a switch parameter, okay? So after that, let's see the configuration. A network administrator installs a network monitoring system along the core switch to monitor traffic usage on the internal network, which you can see in the figure. On core switch S1, all ingress and egress packets passing through the inside interface are mirrored to the network monitoring system. Implementing traffic analyze. Meanwhile, the administrator needs to access and manage the network monitoring system using web for the network. About the configuration on SW1, let's see what we should do. Create a span session one. Set switch one port G01 as a source port and capture both ingress egress packets. And set port G02 as a destination port set the switch parameter. So the command is quite easy to understand. On SW1, the command is monitor session one, source interface G01 both. Both means both ingress and egress. And next, monitor session one, destination interface G02 switch. So that's it. That's a configuration command to satisfy the requirements. And to verify the results, let's see, you the command, show monitor session one. You can see the output here, right? The source interface, source interface G01, destination interface G02, right? And if you want to delete, the command is no monitor session one. And you want to remove port G01 from session one. The command is shown here, no monitor session one source interface G01 both. And when you show this, you cannot see it. You cannot see the interface G01 in the source interface pe period, in the source interface field. Okay, this is about the local port mirroring. Next is a remote port mirroring. 
And from this figure, we can easily find out the difference. R span is a remote port mirror beam. It serves from the local port mirror beam technology span, breaks the limits that the source and destination ports must be on the same device, enabling traffic mirroring across network devices. Network administrator can use an analyzer to check mirror data packets anywhere, anytime. So let's see it. Our span use a remote VLAN to transmit mirrored packets to the destination port of the destination device. The functions is shown here. Firstly, there is a device called source switch. The switch where the source port is located is the source switch. It copies packets from the source port, transmits the packet to the intermediate or destination switch via the remote VLAN. An intermediate switch obviously is a switch that lies between the salt and destination switch. It transmits the packet from the remote VLAN to the next intermediate switch or directly to the destination switch. And the destination switch is easy to understand where the destination port located. So you can see here in this figure, this is a salt device, intermediate device, destination device. And uh, on these devices, we should create the remote VLAN. The remote VLAN is the VLAN that used for the R span, okay, only for R span. And you can see the source, source port is on the source device, destination port is on the destination device. And then let's see the configuration. For key points, first is that configure the remote VLAN on the source, intermediate, and destination device. On the source device, set the port connecting to the listen user as the source port and the port connecting to the intermediate device as the egress port. Then enable the exchange function for the egress port. On the intermediate device, set the ports connecting to the source and destination devices as common trunk ports and ensure that the remote VLAN is allowed to pass the ports. On the destination device, set the port connecting to the intermediate device as the source port, the port connecting to the network analyzer as the destination port. Then enable the exchange function for the destination port. This is about the configuration key points. And next, let's see the commands. Firstly, create a VLAN. Here, what we create is VLAN 7. And uh, remote span means this VLAN is used as the remote VLAN in our span. And next on SW1 is the configuration interface G02, switch port mode trunk is a basic configuration. And then monitor session one, remote source, create a R-span session one, set SW1 as the source device. Monitor session one, source interface, gigabit ethernet 01, both. Set this port as the source port and listen to both ingress and the egress data. And the monitor session one, destination remote VLAN seven, means VLAN seven is a remote VLAN. Interface G02 switch, means this port as the egress port on SW1. And on SW2, it's quite easy, switch port mode trunk. And on SW3, it's a destination switch. Monitor session one, remote destination. This is a destination device and Destination remote VLAN 7, interface G02 switch, set the destination port, right? The destination port here is G02, which is connected with the word shack for the packet capturing. Right? So until now, we have finished the configuration of the R span. It's quite easy to understand, right? And next, let's see the question. To configure port mirroring on rigid switches, you need to Mirror the port G01 ingress traffic. Pay attention here, only the ingress traffic should be mirrored. And the destination port is G02, and the ports can forward data normally. So let's see the choice here. You're asking which of the statements is correct. A, monitor session one, south interface G01 both. This is incorrect, right? Of course, we only need the ingress traffic. So B is incorrect. C, Rx means receive. So it's a ingress traffic. D, T 
TX means transmit. So these, of course, here what we choose is C. Okay, this is about the answer of this question. And about this part, let's see a summary. Port mirroring copies data from a port to another port, which can communicate normally by adding the switch parameter. The source and destination ports can be a layer two and layer three or aggregate interface. Remote port mirroring applies to scenarios where the source and destination ports are on different devices. A remote VLAN can be used to transmit captured packets. Okay, that's all for this part.